Today we've got a great malicious compliance story putting a sexist person in their place. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, not all wheelchair users can walk. So I'm at a theme park and I'm a full-time wheelchair user who cannot walk or stand. I won't name the park as as soon as management found out, they were angry and more than rectify the situation, but the story's funny in my opinion. It happened a few years ago. So one of the rides is in a building and has an area outside the entrance for push chairs and those strollers people bring to theme parks that pull all of their stuff and older kids etc. about to be left there as they aren't allowed in the building. My friend and I head to the entrance and this young employee comes to me and says, you just leave your wheelchair there. I look at him and my friend's about to say something and I catch their eye and wink. I wheel over to the area and sit there with my brakes on. My friend cottons on and comes and stands next to me. The worker comes over and says, you can go in now, seeing me not moving. I reply, how? You told me to put my wheelchair here. He, not seeing what's happening, replies, yes. So you need to leave it here and then go in and get it after. I ask him how that'll work and he sort of blinks at me confused and then walks over to a guest who asked for help. Another worker, older, who has like team leader or supervisor type phrasing on his badge comes over. The guy who's told me to sit there is still talking to another guest and the older worker comes over and asks if I'm okay. I explained that the guy had told me to sit here in my chair and so I did and then he told me to head into the ride. But leaving my chair here and how I'm confused as I can't walk or stand, this worker is mortified and tells me this is obviously not the park rules and how no one is asked to leave their wheelchair there if they don't want to and how I'm allowed in with my chair. The first worker comes over and the supervisor slash team leader asks him what he's on about and how he can't tell wheelchair users to do this etc. The younger guy said he was told to tell people they could leave their wheelchairs there and we work out he's gotten his wires crossed and that some people will ask if they can leave their wheelchairs there who are ambulatory and who use them for when they get tired and that's fine but not everyone in a wheelchair has to leave their chairs there this guy realizes his mistake and then realizes what i'd said about how am i meant to go in means i can't stand or walk and what he'd applied etc and is mortified apologizing over and over i explain how it's okay and i'm glad he's realized what he said wasn't okay but I can see how he gotten confused and turns out he's very new. I head onto the ride and as I exit, the supervisor comes over and refunds us our park entry tickets and has food and shop vouchers for myself and my friend. I explain how they didn't need to do this and how I'm just glad the new guy found out his misunderstanding with me who found it funny and had a bit of fun over someone else. It could have been me on a different day who took offense and got angry, etc which I guess is why I got the free stuff. No, to be fair, I think this is such a blunder that even if somebody was belligerent, took offense, got hugely angry, I think they still would have brought all of those vouchers and refunded the money because that is such a monumental failure of park procedure. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, you can tell him whatever you want to illustrate how badly you need it today, he said. I think you guys will love this one. It's very wholesome. So I had to write a text on a science experiment we did in class. Easy enough. On the due date, however, I had forgotten to print it out, as did many others. So the teacher gave us some guy's email and told us to send him our text so he can print it out for us. You can even tell him that I'll eat your entire family if you don't give it to me by the end of the day, he said. So I did. I did it very formally. It was something along the lines of, Hello, name. Could you print out this text for me? My teacher said he'd eat my entire family and burn down my house if he doesn't have it by the end of the day. He even showed me his pointed teeth. I showed it to my teacher and we laughed a little bit about it, but that wasn't all I was going to write. Oh, no, no, no. Tell him that I said I'll hang you by your feet in the schoolyard, he said to one kid. We briefly made eye contact. With the biggest grin on my face, my fingers flew across the keyboard. My teacher said something along the lines of, oh no. He knew what was coming. If Reddit trolls are keyboard warriors, I was the whole keyboard champion. The satirical email materialized on my screen in milliseconds. After that, 
He also said he's going to hang me by my feet in the schoolyard. Please print it out as soon as possible. Thanks. I showed it to him again, and we laughed our butts off. I attached my document to the email and sent it. The guy replied with a simple, Which teacher's name are you talking about? Anyway, it's done. And his smile was slightly bigger every time we saw each other ever since. Which teacher? Oh, it was just Mr. Bone Crusher the Feared. If you don't know where their class is, it's right between Miss Penelope's and Miss Garfunkel's. Our next story is, you want us to play? Okay, we'll play nothing. So I was a part of one of my school's bands a few years ago, playing the clarinet. We went to a nearby school and did a whole day workshop with their school's band, including playing a few pieces together. While we did this, the conductor would occasionally ask us questions relating to playing the current piece, and have certain parts and instruments play bars while the rest of us listened, and the conductor helped them to improve on that part. I can't remember exactly how the exchange goes, but after a while, this roughly gets said. Okay, we're going to have the parts who play the main melody in bars, so and so play by themselves now. Now, does anyone know which instruments play that part? Again, workshop. Student raises his hand. Oh, it's the clarinets. They play the melody. The conductor says, okay, clarinets, get ready to play. Now here's the thing, for bars so and so, none of the clarinet parts play anything. It's complete silence on our end. The student who said that obviously didn't play the clarinet and didn't sit near us, so they must not have known this, but I did. Guessing what was going to happen, I raised my hand. Um, conductor, the clarinets don't play that. They say just wait, you can ask your question after we play. I say but, he says wait until after we play. So I lower my hand and just decided to let the conductor see for themselves what I was trying to say and let her count us in. And a one, two, three, and clarinets, silence. It took a few seconds for people to realize that we weren't going to play anything and some people started laughing. The conductor realized what I was trying to tell her and quickly moved along. The rest of the day was fun and a good learning experience. Sorry there isn't a big fallout like most stories, but it makes me laugh from time to time, and I hope it made you laugh too. Isn't it so frustrating when you have a moment like this where you try to speak up to save somebody's butt, and they just totally dismiss you, thinking you're babbling about something nonsensical, unimportant? Now just hold on and let me make my mistake, is basically what they're saying. Our next story is, I told him, but he refused to believe me. A short one for a rainy Sunday. We had a new problematic employee started work, and I was told to share the password for a specific tool with him. He had been a pain in the butt and I had been warned about him by a friend who had been his boss at his last place of employment, so I wasn't inclined to make things easy for him. After I was officially told to share, he came over to me and requested the password. Being a helpful employee, I gave it to him. He then asked for it again. I then repeated myself and told him, it's obscene. He walked away grumbling and went to our manager and complained. She, my manager, then called me in and asked me for the password. I of course gave it to her. It's obscene. She then looked at me and shook her head while hiding a subtle smile. She then asked him if he had tried my answer. He said of course not, he refused to give it to me saying that it was obscene. She then looked straight at him and said to enter the actual word obscene. It goes without saying that he and I never became friends. I just love little things like that. When you can make something so literal that people just won't believe you, that's just a great little joy watching them cope with realizing that it really is that literal. Our next story is, I don't know, surprise me. So this is a story of malicious compliance from the other side. I, 40 year old male, was recently divorced and had started dating someone, 38 year old female, who lived in one of the area exurbs. We agreed to meet up for karaoke at a bar local to her that had a noticeably country vibe. Anyway, I wound up stuck at work longer than expected and called to let her know I'd be a few minutes late. She said, no problem. Do you want me to put something in for you? I said, I don't know, surprise me. So literally as I'm walking in the door, the MC is the karaoke person an MC or do they have a different title? calls my name. So I walk directly to the mic, look over, and ask what I'm singing. The music starts playing, and it's Dancing Queen by ABBA. I'm thinking, okay, I'll give it a shot. Well, it turns out that everyone of a certain age can remember how the chorus goes, but I was absolutely clueless for the verse. 
Meanwhile, a few more of the redneck types are looking at me like, are we gonna have to kick his butt? The MC took pity on me and switched to a different song. We've been married now for eight years. I've never asked her to surprise me again. Yeah, hey, I mean, when you ask somebody to surprise you and they give you a legitimate surprise, you literally don't have any room to complain. Our next story is corporate America using return to office mandates as a weapon. So I work for a tech company who's struggling in recent times. They've already had four rounds of layoffs and want to cut more headcount after the hiring freezes and are trying to do this indirectly before another round of layoffs. They're trying to pump up attention by telling everyone to return to their nearest office, even if that office is three hours plus away and if no other teammates sit in that office. Many people went ahead and moved out of the metro areas after being converted remote or hired as remote. So the forced RTO is just a huge pain, huge impact to working parents and seen as an effective pay cut. Some malicious compliance themed ideas we've suggested center around taking conference calls in open spaces, not enough agile seating, and heating mackerel in the microwave for lunch. Our team needs ideas though, wondering if anyone's subject to the same RTO orders and how they're begrudgingly complying or not. I've always hated the idea of forcing people to return back to the office that are more than capable of doing and exceeding in their jobs working from home. Really, it was the one good thing COVID did was make a lot of these enterprises realize that it can work that way. It absolutely sucks to hear about all these companies forcing people to come back in just because they want to watch them or something, or just because they prefer being in person for no reason. This next story is... Yes, I can bring you a mechanic. So I, a now 22-year-old female, was a bicycle mechanic as my first job. When I was a young teen, I didn't do the typical extracurriculars. I instead chose to do a pre-professional ballet and learning how to work on bicycles. It was so much fun, so I chose to go to my local bike shop and offer my expertise for free. At this time, I was 12 years old. While there, I worked up to being able to run the shop all by myself. Naturally, I then had the ability to answer the phones. Many times, people on the other line assumed I was only a receptionist, and in turn asked for a mechanic. I would explain that that is me and asked how I could help them. Typically, I got a pleasant response, followed by their question, but one time this man insisted he talk to a mechanic, even after I tried explaining to him that that was me. He then got very upset and said, no, I want to speak to a man. I said okay and walked the phone over to the owner and told him the situation. The owner was an extremely sweet man that became like family to me over the nine years I'd worked there. After hearing what was going on, he frowned and answered the phone saying, Sir, if you would like to speak to a mechanic, she is my most experienced, and handed me the phone back. After the man on the other line profusely apologized to me, he asked his question. I answered without hesitation, and a week later he went home with a brand new bike that was well over the price he should have paid for what he wanted. Well, at least for this guy's sake, the whole thing happened over the phone. Imagine if they did this in person. This next story is, only a man will do. Maybe 10 years ago, I worked in tech support for a large cell phone company. Depending on the shift, we had vastly different ratios of male versus female employees. Anyhow, there is one shift where most of the floor managers, as well as the shift manager for the entire office, were women. I'd only been working that shift a couple weeks, but knew we weren't supposed to escalate, transfer to a manager, unless it was really unavoidable. I get this caller who will not let me finish sentences, keeps interrupting me, eventually he demands a manager. I reluctantly transfer him and go on with my shift. Next day, Linda, the supervisor who took that call, comes to my desk and says, I need to talk about that escalation last night. I'm thinking I'm in trouble. Turns out dude kept asking for higher supervisors and getting transferred all over the office. Always to women. Finally he loses it and goes, don't any men work there? Cue Paul. Paul was a wonderful, gentle guy who was also very gay. He takes over the call and in the most effeminate way possible says, Hi sweetie, this is Paul, can I help? Dude immediately hung up. I honestly love that this guy got no help whatsoever. They didn't cave. They didn't settle for whatever they think is inferior. They literally just gave up and quit. I say good. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. 
Now if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.